In September, Stephen Dartano, formerly in charge of the FBI's field office in Washington, D.C., testified to the House Judiciary Committee that he was aware the FBI informants would attend the Stop the Steal rally thrown on January 6th. You confirmed that the FBI had confidential human sources at the Stop the Steal rally on January 6th here in D.C., sir? Congressman, as we've discussed before, I'm not going to get into where we have or have not used confidential human sources. But what okay, I can we'll tell move you, on. you asked for a definitive We'll move answer. on. It's my time. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Epps has been sentenced. We're going to get into it in a bunch more on this episode. I'm Aaron Prager, and this is AP Unfiltered. Folks, before we start the show, head on over to MyPatriotCigars.com. Great cigars, great business. Pick them up for yourself, for some loved ones. You could even buy a cigar for a deployed service member and make their day that much more special and show them your appreciation. But be sure you are using promo code APU for 25% off at checkout. From the Post Millennial, breaking Ray Epps sentenced to one year probation, $500 fine after telling J Sixers, quote, we need to go into the Capitol. Epps will serve 100 hours of community service, but no restrictions were placed on his travel during his probation sentence. Ray Epps, the man who claimed to have, quote, orchestrated the events of January 6th, has been sentenced to a year probation for his actions. Julie Kelly tweeted out, also happening today in D.C. courthouse where oral arguments will be heard in Trump's immunity appeal. Ray Epps will be sentenced by the chief judge of D.C. district court. And Epps, unlike nearly all J6 defendants, gets to phone in his attendance. He will not be present in court. So there you have it, folks. Ray Epps, from all the footage that we've seen, one year probation, no travel restrictions, and a $500 fine. Now, I'm not here to make this video to say, hey, there were FBI agents, there weren't FBI agents in the crowd, so on and so forth. I'm merely here to report that there is a massive disconnect between the sentencing that we've got for Ray Epps based on all available video and evidence that has been unearthed and other people who weren't even in D.C. at the time. And he leaned in and whispered something he apparently did not want to say out loud. We're not here to fight, man. We're here to... We're here to storm. I'm not kidding. We're here to storm the Capitol. Hell yeah. All right, have a, have a good night. Be safe. Be safe, brother. That one moment changed what we knew about Ray Epps that night, when he whispered storm the Capitol before it had happened and echoed the official narrative before it was broadcast across the nation. Of supporters of President Trump stormed the U.S. Capitol building. Thousands storming the Capitol. This mob that stormed the Capitol. Stormed the Capitol. And stormed the Capitol. Stormed the Capitol. Stormed the U.S. Capitol building. Stormed the United States Capitol. We ran it through forensic software that technical investigators use for analyzing audio and video to make sure we heard correctly and it had not been altered. I'm not kidding. We're here to storm the Capitol. Hell yeah. And there you have one instance of him saying that they are there to storm the Capitol. Now, there's been speculation as to if he's a Fed or if he's not. But the narrative that the media painted is basically saying that everybody there was not a Fed, I believe is a little, to say the least, untrue. And you can see also here how aware of people in the crowd were leading up to January 6th of the potential presence of federal officers being in the crowd. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. What? No! no. All right, no, Dave, but one more thing. Yeah, so can we go up there? No? When we go in. Are we going to get arrested when we go up there? Yeah. You don't need to get Did shot. You arrest us all?
Now, before we go any further, I want to be explicitly clear here. If you were violent on January 6th, you deserve a punishment. There's nothing, there's nobody who disagrees with that. If you broke the law, then you deserve a punishment. But in that same breath, you need to hold the people truly responsible for the violence accountable. And the little MAGA Mimas who are a hundred yards back, technically in a restricted zone because they never even saw where the barriers were after the people in the front where you saw Ray Epps whisper to people and then two seconds later they break down the barricades. They had, the people in the back had no idea that there was even people, that, that they were even in a restricted zone to begin with. Now, did they go inside the Capitol? Not all of them. If you broke a window to go inside the Capitol, then yes, that's a crime. But to see Ray Epps and his conviction contrasted with some of these other convictions that we're getting are absolutely astounding. Let's take a look. From Axios, here are the harshest punishments yet for January 6th rioters. Let's just go down real quick. The big picture, more than 1,100 people, including, have been charged in connection to the U.S. Capitol riot. Uh, number one, Enrico Tario, former leader of the right-wing extremist group Proud Boys, was sentenced to 22 years in prison for his role in the Capitol insurrection, the longest sentence yet in the January 6th cases. Keep in mind, and they, to their credit, they actually pointed it out here. He wasn't at the Capitol riot because he was arrested days earlier, but prosecutors argued that Tario maintained command over the Proud Boys and cheered on the group as its members stormed the Capitol. S essentially saying that, okay, he wasn't there. He wasn't there, but because he may have said something and cheered on people doing things, therefore he is con he, he gets convicted of, I believe it was seditious, yeah, seditious conspiracy and gets 22 years in jail, okay? Let's keep it going. Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers, serving one of the longest sentences thus far with an 18-year prison term, okay? Once again, these people are getting charges for seditious conspiracy. And I looked up seditious conspiracy and it says is a crime in various jurisdictions of conspiring against the authority or legitimacy of the state. Okay, so explain to me again, how is this a guilty charge for seditious conspiracy? There's no way you're actually overthrowing the United States government by occupying a building. We have to remember that everything's done electronically anyway. If for some reason they were to actually have gotten in and officially, and which they did disrupt the proceedings, I'm not gonna deny that, but the certification still would have gone on folks. So Stuart Rhodes gets 18 years while Ray Epps gets one year probation and a $500 fine. Ethan Nordine, U.S. military veteran who led the Seattle chapter of the Proud Boys was also sentenced to 18 years. Seditious conspiracy. Prosecutors were seeking 27 year sentence and I know they were actually very upset that they didn't get the full 20 year sentence. Joe Biggs, the former leader of the Proud Boys was sentenced to 17 years in prison this week after being found guilty of seditious conspiracy once again. The sentence is about half as long as what prosecutors requested. Uh, the DOJ, DOJ asked that Biggs serve 33 years in prison. All these people, leaders of different chapters of what they like to call far right extremist groups. And that's what the media is targeting because you contrast that with people like they didn't do anything more than what Ray Epps did. Ray Epps is literally on the ground inciting violence. You could hit him with seditious conspiracy because they're trying to overthrow the legitimacy of the state, right? How is, how are, how is everybody else getting this time and he's not? I'm not here. Like I said, I'm not going to point the finger and say he's a fed or not. I'm just leaving it open-ended for people to question and put the facts right in front of your face because the reality is this, with all available evidence, there was most likely some federal assets in the crowd. And as you can see in this clip, FBI Director Christopher Wray is unable to comment on it, period. In September, Stephen D'Artano, formerly in charge of the FBI's field office in Washington, D.C., testified to the House Judiciary Committee that he was aware the FBI informants would attend the Stop the Steal rally thrown on January 6th. You confirmed that the FBI had confidential human sources at the Stop the Steal rally on January 6th here in D.C., sir? Congressman, as we've discussed before, I'm not going to get into where we have or have not used confidential human sources. But what okay, I can we'll tell move you, on. you asked for a definitive answer. We'll move answer. on. It's my time. You said no. You're not going to answer. That's cool. We're watching. If the left and Democrats are so convinced of what the allegations that they are bringing are, wouldn't they want 
every single piece of evidence brought to the table to back up their claims, wouldn't they in fact want that rather than hiding it from you, rather than hiding it from the American people? The best way to propagate a narrative and to feed people misinformation is to only come out with bumper sticker slogans time and time again and jam them down the throat of the American people until they are willing to buy what you are selling. That has been the motive of them for a very long time. That has been the motive of the establishment as far back as I can remember. And they're doing it again. And they're then giving passes to people like Ray Epps while they are having people who are maybe innocent, maybe not. But the reality is there are many people that are completely 110% innocent from these awful charges. And they are rotting away in a DC gulag away from their families, unable to provide without trial. That is the reality on the ground. And the left is spinning it into 2024. And you were, I would bet my bank account on this. This rhetoric is only going to escalate from here. It's only going to get worse. And they're going to try to sow division further and further. Joe Biden said it himself. He's coming after all of them. That the main threat he is trying to say in this country is more than half of the country, people who disagree with him, according to poll numbers, that don't support him. Definitely the people who support Donald Trump and continue to support Donald Trump. One desperate act available to him, the violence of January the 6th. And since that day, more than 1,200 people have been charged for their assault on the Capitol. Nearly 900 of them have been convicted or pled guilty. Collectively to date, they have been sentenced to more than 840 years in prison. And what's Trump done? Instead of calling them criminals, He's called these, these insurrectionists patriots. They're patriots. And he promised to pardon them if he returns to office. Trump said that there was a lot of love on January the 6th. The rest of the nation, including law enforcement, saw a lot of hate and violence. One Capitol Police officer called it a medieval battle. That same officer called vile rape was called vile racist names. At every turn to try to unify people, Biden seems to be trying to drive a wedge between people more, to paint half of the country as these evil Nazi-like people. And I'll leave you with this. The left, when they say they want to unify, they mean everybody has to come to their side, not find a middle ground. That is their goal, for you to come to their side, to shut up, and be a bootlicker for their cause and the establishment ultimately. But listen, folks, it's all I got for you today. If you find value within this, do me a huge favor real quick. Hit the like button on the video. Hit the follow button on the channel. The sub button if you're over on YouTube. And if you like content like this, you want me to keep producing content like this, share the show with a friend. Can't tell you how important that last part is. But until next time, I'll catch y'all in the next one.